Praise be to God, my dear brothers and sisters. Father Clay Hunt here, the cowboy priest. We're back in the saddle here after they cut us off yesterday. And it's true that we never give up the good fight. We never surrender. And we are afflicted and besieged, as St. Paul would say, on every side. But we never surrender the good fight. And we recognize that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And that's why we have to be on point. We have to give it our best. We have to stay sharp. And I was just talking to a priest earlier here in the United States of America. And he's in danger of being destroyed by wicked men in high places. And as we were talking, I told him we, we freely admit that we're poor men. We're men who are ripe with concupiscence. In other words, that we have a tendency to sin, but not with malintent, out of weakness. Most of us are just simply weak men who love God and who desire for God. And sometimes we fall short of the mark or sometimes we get bucked off. Sometimes we fall down and that's where we go to the Holy Confession. But these offenses are not in opposition to truth itself. In the sense that, I mean, there are sins of humanity. But there are other sins that are insidious. And in fact, <clears throat> the ones who are against us, who are against the church, the bride of Christ, who are against the Lord himself, now that's insidious. And that's who's working with every intention and with every, they don't possess virtue, but they are working hard, not in a virtuous sense, but they work hard to destroy what is holy to God. And that's what's happening to many priests in our time. And this priest that I was talking to, you know, even though I, as he admitted to me, he's just a man. And that's true to every single priest. That's why St. Paul was the one who said, you know, among those who are sinners, I am numbered among the the most sinful or the greatest sinner, you know. And it's true that we recognize our poverty as men. Look at the holy man David, of whom the Lord said, he's a man after my own heart. He was complicit to murder. And he was an adulterer by his own volition. Seduced by temptation as he was, that's true. But he knew how to repent to God and he knew what was true to God. And that's why he measured himself in the way that he did. The wicked ones are of a completely other substance. They are wicked in essence. And they intentionally set themselves against truth and they don't come out of the shadows too often or expose themselves because they know that they would be exposed and called out. That's why they are two-faced. They are duplicitous in the very essence of duplicity. And in fact, they are insidiously wicked. And the way that they operate is they... They operate in half-truths and lies supported by their father, the father of lies, the father of discouragement. And that's why when they push on, you know, good priests and who among us are saints in this life, it's not true. 
Sainthood is only achieved in fullness in the kingdom of heaven. That's why even we were talking about and some jerk said online in their comments talking bad about Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And she was about as close to perfection as you could come on this side of heaven. But when asked about it, you know, she said, I'm nothing but a broken stub of a pencil. But God writes love letters with me. And that's, that's magnificently beautiful. And it's true. We are all flawed instruments. But what delineates and separates a person of weakness from a person of malintent is recognition and surrender to truth. And this priest that I was talking to, God bless his heart. I, I told him, you've been going to the Holy Confession, Father? And he was like, Father, I've been going to the Holy Confession every single day since December the 7th. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, God bless that priest. But you have to understand that there is tremendous assault on the priesthood, on priests, and on good priests that even though they're weak men, and they are not perfect men. They do believe in God. And they believe in what's true to God. And for the most part, they dedicate themselves even authentically for the good of the people of God and for the salvation of souls. But they are cornered in this time and isolated and hunted by a pack. And there's no one to help them. Not every priest is a cowboy. That's just true. And that's why so many countless priests, unjust and unfair it is, as it is, have been completely destroyed. And they lose their, their life. And it's even possible to lose eternal life, obviously, for a priest. But that is in an unjust way. There are many priests who will rightly have their skulls pave the floor of hell. Rightly. But then there are many priests who are caught up in the collateral damage of these times who can potentially lose life eternal. Because although it is their, not their intention to, to be Separated from God, they are driven into it. And they are so discouraged and beat down. And so mistreated that they lose it. They lose hope. And they are swept away in the raging seas of, of this time. And that's why you have to pray for priests and support them. And to the degree that it's possible, you have to come to realization that you're the only entity who is going to be able to rise up and put the house of God in order. The laity. And I don't know exactly how it's going to happen or how it's going to play out, but it is. I'm absolutely confident to that. But only the Lord himself is the one who knows the intricacies of this plan. But I hope that it comes soon. And I hope in the multiplicity of talents and oftentimes surpassing authenticity of holiness that the laity possess, definitely more than the pejorative of the hierarchy of Holy Mother Church and in fact surpassing to many priests. There are holy priests and there are good priests, but the, the priesthood is 
down and out right now. She's on her passion, the priesthood, the Via Dolorosa. Just like Christ when he was beaten unrecognizably. As the prophet Isaiah rightly said of him, he looked like a worm and no man. That's how the priesthood has become. So I encourage you to encourage your priest and to pray for them. For the ones that are holy. For the ones that you recognize as unauthentic, which there are many. There is a whole army of them. And you should be the one to challenge them at every point. To confront them at every turn. And to beat them into submission because they have no firm ground to stand on. Their arguments are a facade. Their ideologies are a facade. Their way of thinking is a facade to truth. And they are easily put in their place. But somehow you have to be the one to wake up and do it. O oh, people of God. You have to be the one to wake up and put the house of God in order. And please God, once you do that, there will be a renewal of holiness in the episcopate and in the presbyterate. And then you can let it return freely or let the reins go freely and let that horse run. Because that's the way the Lord established it to be. The church is rightly governed by her hierarchy. But we're just in the worst of times. And it ain't that way right now. And that's why you have to step up and take hold of the reins, O people of God. And to see, you will be shocked when it is made known to you in fullness the reality of the sufferings of these times, especially to God's priests. I know a good priest whom I love, and he's beautiful, and they are constantly hounding him in every way. And it's not only to him. It's basically to any priest who desires to authentically be faithful to the priest, our Lord Jesus Christ. It comes with a heavy price these days. And they are being hunted. The priests. Authentic of the Lord. And they are intentionally. They are being hunted with intention. So I just wanted to let you know that. And we got to pick up where we left off yesterday. In reflection. In Lenten lessons. Because I love you and I want you to be strong. I want you to be people who, although you yourselves are also imperfect, that you're on the journey, the path to our heavenly homeland. The only true migration, the only true immigration, passing from the deserts of this world to our true homeland, nuestra patria verdadero, el reino de los cielos, the kingdom of heaven, our heavenly father's home. That's our true place. That's our inheritance. Creator of the earth and skies, to whom all truth and power belong, grant us your truth to make us wise. Grant us your power to make us strong. Lord, bless your priests in their moment of need. Bless your priests, O oh Lord. We have not known you to the skies. Our monuments of folly soar. 
and all our self-wrought miseries have made us trust ourselves the more. We have not loved you far and wide. The wreckage of our hatred spreads and evils wrought through human pride recoil on unrepentant heads. We long to end this worldwide strife. How shall we follow in your way? Speak to mankind your words of life until the darkness turns to day. Remove from us, O oh Lord, we pray these dark times. And I was reading to you yesterday from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes had come to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? And the Lord Jesus replied, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is your God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And the second, to love your neighbor as yourself. These are the first two, and none is greater than these. And that scribe told to the Lord, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings. And he recognized rightly. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. You are not far from the kingdom of God. And then it says, and no one dared to ask any more questions. Because the Lord is too powerful. <laughs> and he alone is the Lord. And I was speaking in half, halfway, expressing what I was trying to express. And I was cut off by insidious intention yesterday. But... It is true that I believe President Donald J. Trump is being used as an instrument of the Lord. And even in his unknowing, and he knows many things, we recognize that he is a powerful intellect as far as the substance of men go in the natural order. You might say he's an alpha male. <laughs> It wouldn't be that you might say that. I mean, he is an alpha male. <laughs> He's a, a badass dude. And he grew up, you know, fighting in the world. And he never grew up Catholic. But he has a sense of right and goodness. You know, one of the favorite things that I came to know about President Donald J. Trump, because Father Clay loves the poor people. That's always my preference. I always am most comfortable among the poor. And that's why I love the poor. Big time. And I am solicitous to the poor and their poverty. And I never shame the poverty of the poor. I find my place and my fulfillment with the poor and even the poorest of the poor. When I lived in Colonia Voluntari Trabajo Numero Tres, on the outskirts of Laredo, shacks, that was in 2002, 2003, when it was coming to the fullness of wickedness, the cartels out of Mexico, the Setas, and other cartels. It was like the Wild West and 
tremendous injustices out there on those dirt streets and cardboard and plywood structures that all these people coming from central Mexico and South Mexico and other places came to the border and were unable to cross and settle there, but they were beautiful and I loved being with them. I remember that little family, they were from San Luis Potosí and they told me, brother, because I was a religious brother at that time, they told me, brother, come to our house and we want to make for you comida típica de San Luis Potosí, enchiladas. Verdes de San Luis Potosí. And it was so delicious. They gave their best that they could to me. And I gave the best that I could to them. My full heart. And that's always the way it is with the poor. In the little cowboy priest book. I love them. And President Donald J. Trump is also like that. I was listening to interviews. To him. Of people who you know, who were little people who saw him on a regular basis, like a black man who was a porter at his tower, I guess Trump Tower, or one of his facilities, I guess Trump Tower. So he would open the door every day for, for the president. And this was long before he was president. I'm talking for 30 plus years. And this black man said, I never encountered such a compassionate person is Donald J. Trump. He knew all my family and he would ask about them regularly and even daily he would greet me with sincerity. That's true substance right there. Even though President Donald J. Trump was never raised in the fullness of understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's the Catholic Church. But he believes in God and he has the substance of goodness in his heart. And he follows after that, imperfect as he may be as a man, like yours truly, <laughs> or like David the King, or like any man. But I believe the substance of Donald J. Trump is beautiful to God and to other people especially to the poor. And this man said that his son, maybe it was, or grandson or nephew, some relation, had the opportunity with good grades, but he was unable to pursue what his dream was to school. And one time he shared that with now President Donald J. Trump who at that time was not president. And out of his generosity, he paid for the education of that young man and got him into the institution to which he desired. And he was very successful. That's amazing. And there was another woman. She was from Honduras. And she cleaned rooms, maybe in a Trump hotel somewhere and she worked for years for Donald J. Trump again before he was president this was years ago but she was recounting the story and unfortunately her mother passed away in Honduras but in their poverty and barely making ends meet she was unable to, to have the means to go to the funeral of her mother. But it came to the knowledge of Donald J. Trump, of the plight of this woman. And he paid the travel expenses and other expenses, not only to her own person, but to her entire family to return to Honduras and to give prayers and a proper Christian burial to her mom. And he gave them, I believe it was even three weeks or a month of paid leave. 
to attend to those things. That's beautiful. And the world doesn't know about those things. But that's authenticity of charity. And that's why even though he's not perfect on his understanding, like he was unknowingly and foolishly promoting in vitro fertilization, IVF, he did that in measure to what he believes is good or helpful to the masses, but lacking an understanding that in fact, that's a big time problem to God and to us. <laughs> a big time problem to God and to us. And hopefully he comes to, to know that. Hopefully he is enlightened to those things. That's what I wanted to tell you. And from today, in the liturgy of the Holy Mass, that you may see and understand the challenges that we are facing in our time from the Holy Gospel of Luke. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness. That's the Pharisees. And despised everyone else because they do. They don't care about God and they don't care about God's people. You have to come to understand that. Neither do they care about God nor do they care about God's people. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. This is a parable Jesus is saying. One of them was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. In other words, supposedly supposed to be a holy man to God and the other one a so-called sinner. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. Oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes on my whole income. <laughs> I guarantee you. None of these modern day Pharisees fast twice a week. They know nothing to fasting. There is no way that a, a person, a man, could fast in authenticity and behave as these modern day Pharisees do. No way, Jose. He said, I fast twice a week and pay my tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And that's like that priest that I was talking to this morning. What a beautiful man. And even I envy him in a way for his beauty. As he spoke and revealed to me things. I can tell. That he has the intention. To love God. And to be faithful to God. And the Lord. Is the only one. Who knows the mind. And the heart. The Lord is the only one. Who knows the mind. And the heart. Of the human person. I tell you, Jesus said, the latter went home justified, not the former. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Pure gold, truth, and I guarantee you, there are many wicked men who are having their way with the bride of Christ right now who are going to be big time humbled. I can't wait to see the end of this rodeo where they're bucked off. And when they hit the dirt, let that just 
fury of the bull of the Lord come down in a crushing way upon them. Because there is no greater offense than what they are perpetrating right now. And I want to read to you from the Office of Readings, the Liturgy of the Hours from yesterday, from the book of Exodus. And this is critically important. The priest of the Lord and myself were talking about the importance of adoration, the, the importance of holy things to God. And this demonstrates how solicitous we have to be to the holy things to God. Because the Lord himself requires that. This is from the book of Exodus. The making of the sanctuary of the ark. So the sanctuary has to be according to the, the specifics of measurement. And the, the specifics of instruction of the Lord. And that is the same of the times of old as it is today. And that's why these slipshot modern day Pharisees. In the way that they operate. In the way that they think. And in the way that they do. They are absolutely offensive to God. Because they pay no heed to his instruction. They pay no heed to the deposit of faith. They pay no heed to the traditions that have come to us from the apostles. They are destroyers. But we make it our business to be attentive to the details that the Lord requires of us. Listen to these instructions. Moses said to the Israelites, see the Lord has chosen Bezal, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and has filled him with a divine spirit of skill and understanding and knowledge in every craft. And it's true that the Lord gives to his people such gifts for crafts and knowledge and creativity. And that's why I want you to to run with those gifts. In the production of the embroidery. And making of gold and silver and bronze. And cutting and mounting precious stones. And carving wood and in every other craft. He also has given both him and Ohol Oholiab. Son of Ahishamak of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. There are some who have the skills to teach. And I encourage you in this uninspirable generation not to give up on the arts and the teaching of the arts. He has endowed them with skill to execute all types of work, engraving, embroidering, and making of variegated cloth of velvet, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen thread, weaving and all other arts and crafts. Bezalel, therefore, will set to work with Oholayim, with all the experts whom the Lord has endowed with skill and understanding and knowing how to execute all work for the service of the sanctuary, just as the Lord has commanded. And that's why these modern day Pharisees are so obstinate as to destroy the traditional Latin mass because they do not care about God and nor do they care about what is holy to God. So they want to break it down and to fashion things after their own designs in a way Different than the way of the Lord. Because deeply in truth, they despise the Lord.
Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, one and a half cubits wide, and one and a half cubits high. The inside and the outside were plated with gold, and a molding of gold was put around it. Four gold rings were cast and put for its four supports, two rings for one side and two rings for the opposite side. How about that for detail? <laughs> Poles of acacia wood were made and plated with gold. These were put through the rings on the sides of the ark for carrying it.